So, you guys potentially have heard of, if not used, a food delivery app in the past, right? Things like Foodler, now there's Grubhub, uh, insert, insert app here, they deliver stuff to you next. So now there's something called Robomart, which actually wants to bring groceries and like baked goods and other like prepared foods that a supermarket may have. They want to bring that to your doorstep next. So basically, Wally is a thing that's going to happen soon. If you haven't watched that film, definitely watch it. Um, but Ali Ahmed uh, had this vision for about 10 years now, this kind of uh, autonomous grocery store uh, on wheels, right? And so the, his concept is it's a, it's a car that has grocery items and other kind of supermarket type items. Uh, but primarily, I believe, at the, at the beginning is groceries. And they deliver that to the end user. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, there's certain things here to consider, which is one, you know, parking, right? Because it's, it's autonomous. And so it's not uh, unlike things like Grubhub or, or Foodler, where you've got a driver, a person who goes into the restaurant, takes the food, brings it to their car, drives the car, parks it, walks it up to your house. Uh, this is just a completely uh, robotic <laughs> system where there are no people involved. Uh, kind of strange. Um, kind of strange if you really think about it. Um, but it's sort of like, you know, any of those. Like, I mean, there's Amazon. Um, what, are they, what are they called? Amazon Fresh. Uh, I think so, there's yeah. like Peapod, there's a bunch of other, you know, the supermarkets and also, of course, Amazon and some other uh, bigger retailers that kind of have their own system of delivering groceries and things from their um, products already. But this would be really uh, takes kind of people out of the equation, takes drivers out of the equation. And uh, Robomart is really supposed to be um, so that local kind of smaller uh, supermarkety type companies can can all benefit from it. You know, somebody could order from any one of ten little mom and pop shops in the area. This Robo Mart goes over there, picks up all the stuff, and then delivers it to your house, right? So, well, and I would say too, it's not really the mom and pop shops. I would say it's it's these smaller companies that aren't maybe like national brands. But they're probably more just kind of smaller scale as in more of the local, but still fairly large. Yeah, I mean, his Ahmed's uh, kind of vision was that um, these vehicles could be purchased by a collective of local stores mm. uh, to be used to so that they could compete with the big box retailers. Um, so, right, it doesn't have it, it may not be literally a, a local mom and pop shop, but certainly smaller chains that are probably owned by families quite likely um and who are trying to compete sort of in a bigger on a bigger stage if you will uh, and they will be leasing the robomart <laughs> the robomart vehicle um and instead of them opening up um his his other his thinking is that instead of these local stores needing to open up either more stores or opening up a store at all, a brick and mortar store, they could sort of be this virtual store, like an Etsy, if you will, where you go online, you order what you want, Robomart del does the delivery for you. Mm. Which is interesting because the more, it, it just kind of goes back to everything else that we've been talking about where it's sort of automation, right? And this idea that machines are, you know, machines, AI, are kind of, removing people from a lot of the equations <laughs> and um, in a way making things more efficient and easier for us but in another way taking away jobs well uh, creating other unforeseen problems down the line well yeah and going back to it like I feel like for instance something like this would take out many of those actual mom and pop shops where they've been around the neighborhood for 30 40 years 
They're that local convenience store who might not just have the money or might not understand the technology behind it and trying to implement a new system. And I feel like it may have an impact on them because less people will have to walk even just down the road a little ways when they can keep doing what they're doing, whether it's laundry or work or, or what have you, and just have everything delivered automatically. And I think that could impact these smaller chains that just can't get involved with a, a, a kind of plan like this. And what I'm intrigued on really too is, you know, if they're taking out the driver, are they also taking out the people loading the machine? How will the machine be loaded? Um, because for instance, you could technically have machines also load up the vehicle as well, right? Depending on how it's parked and, you know, conveyor belts or however else, uh, mechanical arms, however technical you want to get with the process. So then that could take away potential jobs there. But again, they're jobs that don't really exist anyway currently. So can you really be mad at that situation? Uh, you know, that's kind of a, a, a tough spot to be in to try to figure out. But I am intrigued on how they plan on loading these things and how do they plan on getting the materials all together and separating it with orders. I think a lot of like the logistical stuff just seems to be piquing my curiosity a lot as well. And I'm sure his investors is as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Because I, I can also picture, because if you can see the picture on Twitch here, it legitimately looks like just a car, ref like a refrigerator on wheels, basically. You open the doors and you can grab broccoli, you can grab kale, you can grab potatoes or whatever. Which begs the question, why would you not just grab everything on there? Yeah, how do you get charged for a system like this? And you know, many other facets logistically that I'm just trying to figure out. And right now it's just not clicking with how this could be viable. But like with many other companies too that have, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure when somebody pitched Uber Eats mm. or, uh, or Grubhub up to anybody else, they probably were thinking the same thing. You know, well, how are you going to find drivers and how are you going to pay them? And, uh, you know... Uh, what if the restaurant doesn't have the food that they want? And what if, you know, there's all of these questions that, uh, you know, I'm sure the kinks have started to be, you know, have pretty much been worked out from that system. And I use food delivery systems all the time and uh, even have a, a grocery delivery system as well that comes direct from a farm. So the, the kinks, I think, will be worked out. The... For me, at least, the the question is um, not not the how they will do it, but rather uh, the when. <laughs> like, when will we just live in a society where we have everything it, just so easily accessible, and, and in a way where um, you know we will have eliminated the need for some of the more stereotypically. Um, lower paying jobs um where we will actually have more free time to pursue more of the things that we want to pursue I which mean, again that that has its own rabbit hole right because like for instance right. what are the interests of these folks who would be potentially either losing a job or losing out on the potential of a job and what kind of resources are really laid at their feet right now where they can utilize to get the training they need maybe for something else or the time that they need I mean, there, there are other factors involved, too, which can make it even more difficult for these individuals. I remember when I was first reading this article, too, what I was thinking of is just the whole uh, industry of farming. And maybe this is a little bit of a tangent, but, you know, if we're, autom if we're automating things like food distribution in a way mm -hmm. on a smaller scale, then maybe we could automate food distribution on the larger scale. That would take care of some world hunger problems and like all this other stuff and then maybe we could automate just the food production i mean you know th now they can make food out of uh plants or seeds or some other um materials that taste like meat right and right. uh so it really it's it's just fascinating that you know this kind of the whole food industry as a whole and then the distribution of that food it has it has amazing potential um, but then it also requires us to have kind of like a whole lifestyle change. And I'm like, I'm excited about it, but I'm also, you know, people, people are, as much as I want to believe in the, in the goodness of human beings, I also feel like 
there's just so much potential for um, bad here, <laughs> um, especially if this uh, trend of technology moving at the fast pace that it has been moving at and now um you know just kind of going in the in the direction that it's going and with all of the other turmoils that are happening you know and i'm just i'm just very interested in finding out how how this will all play out but that's a tangent a little bit of a tangent there i guess we're, we're just talking about robomart right now but uh, i just remember kind of reading about that and thinking about just the whole industry uh, as a whole Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just food distribution in general. <laughs> and I'd like to also welcome uh, Pixel Lily. Welcome back. And Linaris, welcome back. And Indy, great to see you again. Hopefully, you all are enjoying your Wednesday. <laughs> and welcome to chat. Uh, but yeah, with the Robomart. Refrigerator. <laughs> I think the there there is a potential perk, though it's not being emphasized that I've seen from the company or from uh, the individual, the mastermind kind of behind this Robomart. And that is the fact of accessibility to those within the city, within urban mm -hmm. areas who might not have uh, the ability to get the types of fruits and vegetables and actually healthy goods. So, you know, there is stuff beyond your little Debbie snack cake. OK, folks, just saying that right now. And unfortunately, though, things like those kinds of snacks are so readily available and so super cheap that the diets of many people in urban areas and in, in cities can really plummet because of that it's it's easily accessible for people fast you know always on the move always on the go uh who maybe don't have a ton of money to really invest into uh their food because they're busy paying their bills and and trying to feed multiple people rather than just themselves so they have mm -hmm. to try to conserve a little bit and you know this could be depending on the philosophy behind the company a great way for those families to get the food, to get the fruits, the vegetables and everything else to feed people properly and give them the nutrients and vitamins and everything that they actually need. And I think this has great potential, though, unfortunately, I have my doubts about them taking it this far, is I think it would be a great tool for education because the nutrition education in the U.S. is horrible. It is horrible. What nutrition education? You know, the, the <laughs> ways of teaching people how to cook, what to cook, why they're cooking what they're cooking, why they're eating what they're eating is so deficient in the United States. And I'm not bashing the U.S. at all, but I'm saying that that part of our educational system, among many other facets of our educational system, need help, need assistance, and need to grow. There are many people in other countries who are able to take on and actually educate and get people eating healthier living longer lives and better understanding what's in their food and why they should be eating it and so i think this could be a great way of incorporating that if they decide to go this route because they can then bring at accessibility to these families and also be able to actually teach them like okay well this is why you actually would maybe want to eat a turnip or this is why you should introduce more kind of leafy greens into your diet. And I think that could have a huge impact. But again, will they do the educational route? I'm, my guess is 99.9% .9 no. <laughs> well, I mean, someone's got to pay for that. Who's going to pay for it? Yeah. So, but I do think, though, that overall it could have its benefits. Or if someone else decides to pick up the mantle, uh, if this doesn't work out. I think it could be very beneficial as long as someone understands their market, who they're trying to help out, and make it more than just convenience. Yeah, I think it's interesting that you you have the faith that this will actually be a, 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 a nice cost-effective alternative. To me, this sounds actually like a premium service that I don't think would necessarily be accessible to families because somebody's got to pay for the car, the fuel, uh, the refrigeration. <laughs> and I, I actually think that might actually get past, uh, you know, th um, the companies that, the stores that use this product, this Robomart, will actually up their pricing because they have to help pay for that um, so I actually view it as more of a premium service where it won't be, it, it will have the opposite of being accessible to people who actually really could benefit from it. And it's more for 
like the person like like me like the lazy person who's like yeah i'm busy i don't have time for this stuff like give give me the food (laughs) um because i definitely know you know places like food delivery places don't they're not actually cheaper they sometimes have delivery fees depending on whatever restaurant right like it's a oh yeah and i'm not saying that this would be for this specific program in vehicle and whatnot would be for those in urban areas who are having tougher times economically but i'm saying someone could create a system based off of something like this Uh, and use it for good plus if you really (laughs) think about it their whole thing is about saving money right they're cutting costs because they're it's a it's uh, autonomous so you know it's the vehicle driving itself so you're not paying a person per hour you're not paying for their health coverage or anything like that uh they're not paying depending on if it's an electric car they're not paying for the gas of it they've got to plug it in but other than that plug they could be in. seeing a lot of different cost savings just from that alone than running a regular delivery car with again full refrigeration but still have the person driving it uh full premium gas or whatever they'd have to put into it and what have you so again it depends on uh, how they're making this come about and what they're going to be doing i i can definitely see this as a premium i'm sure they are that's how they got the investors in the first place is by saying <laughs> we're going to deal this out to upscale people but there is a potential and maybe it's just because i like seeing the good potential in people and things but i think people could utilize this for a good though i don't know how well these people will uh, we also have some great stuff in chat here too i just want to make sure to highlight uh indy says i hate that companies change their products to be cheaper in production absolutely they cut corners they don't put in the the fresh ingredients they should be and it really doesn't save you anything but it definitely saves them um so it's it's really interesting how that all works out and it's frustrating especially here in the u.s to see that and uh we also have uh how to make people starve ridiculous pricing on healthy food and fast food which is what norway's in right now from pixel lily i believe that's also here <laughs> well fast food is actually pretty dirt cheap here in comparison depending on where you go but um what she's saying though is that in norway even fast food is high priced too oh okay i was reading that as the ridiculous pricing was on healthy food and so what's available is fast food yeah so as an alternative right which would be like here <laughs> that would be definitely here in the u.s yeah. Uh, RX Mongo says this could influence lifestyle change. It's easier to get an apple off the Robo Mart than drive to the store <laughs> for snack cakes. Uh, of course, depending on what these will carry. Now that's uh, a good point too. I think that's fairly valid. I think. Of course, if I was Robo Mart, I'd definitely be putting snack cakes because I understand human nature and I would want them to uh, just keep using Robo Mart. Yeah, that's true. That is true. And for <laughs> for all of your needs, no matter what. I mean, they put healthy produce inside this image here of the the vehicle. Uh, that you just saw previously but that doesn't mean they won't stuff it with other stuff too right it's on the other side the snack cakes and the cookies exactly so i mean really this could all come down to well what addiction sells (laughs) is it the sugar addiction is it the healthy addiction what what kind of addiction will really sell to you they'll stuff into this car 